Hi, I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company, and today I'm delighted to be talking about the wonderful short film All in Favor, which is currently shortlisted for this year's Academy Awards in the live action short film category. We are joined today by writer, director, and producer Santiago Requejo and executive producer Tono Escudero. And for both of you, I, I was interested in, in kind of the collaboration between the two of you in, in working on this film and, and telling the story because there's, you know, so many challenges that come with telling a, a story in short form. Um, you're working on very limited time with limited budgets. And, and I was interested for both of you in, in what some of that collaboration with the two of you and the rest of the crew behind the scenes looked like in pre-production in order to dive into production, feeling ready to do everything that you need and surmount all the challenges of telling a story in short form. Wow. Well, <laughs> as you know, I mean, all in Favor is a very special project, as Santiago will tell you now. And it's very special also in terms of, of production because the way it is shot. So it, it was like a very a little challenge, not only for both of us, but also for the crew and the cast. I mean, the collaboration was very close. I mean, Santiago, as you said, is also producer and we work together, I mean, day, in a daily basis in the production company to 59 films. So it's a very fluent process as from the first idea that came to him and getting it into a schedule, a budget, a crew and a cast, which is much like, like my, my tasks or my duties, was a very close process. I mean, the, the cast arrives like very easy because all the actors wanted to just sign and they were very good actors and actresses and Santiago was happy with them. We came with close collaborators that had worked with Santiago and with us before in terms of the, especially the DP, uh, props, art, sound, etc. So it was like an, an I, I mustn't say an easy pre-production because it, then the process was very tight. But I mean, it, it was just not that difficult in terms of of production and and, on, and in getting the vision of Santi into. Um, a shooting and then to a short film. But Tono was very, uh, very brave, brave, valiente. Bold or, or reckless. I don't know what to say. Because yes. uh, he trusted uh, on, on me uh, in the way to shoot this short film. And I'm very grateful uh, to Tono for, for, for believing us, no? Uh, because it was a very difficult uh, issue to, to achieve. No, don't know. Yes. <laughs> and that's what I would say. I don't know if it's brave or reckless or, or unconscious. Because, I mean, you, no. you either have the shot or you don't have it. And in terms of risk-reward uh, risk uh, ratio, it's a little bit crazy for a producer. But we dirt and, I mean... We, had only, we had only one day, um, nine hours. So it was very, very, very difficult to, to get it. That's so impressive that you filmed all of that in just one day, given that, it, you know, the film mm. is one take throughout one single camera shot. Um, Santiago, how did you come up with the idea or when did you know that you wanted to film the entire short without ever cutting the camera and that that was how you wanted to tell the story? Well, uh, while I was writing the script, I felt... Uh, I wanted to to tell this story in one shot because I wanted uh, to make the audience feel like another neighbor in that meeting. You know what I mean? And when when I was writing, uh, something inside uh, me uh, tells me one shot, one shot. I don't know why. And, and for both of you, what did that mean for the post-production, for the editing process? Because, um, you know, like like you touched upon before, if you, if you don't have the shot, you don't have the shot and it's really choosing the right take. But there's still so many other aspects of editing. There's sound design, there's color correction um, and so many other elements. So what did the editing and post-production of a film look like when you're filming the entire thing in one single take? Uh, for me, I, I don't know, Tono. For me, the most difficult thing was the 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 end the ending credits, uh, because 
uh, you can uh, continue to tell the story with the end credits. And in a way, uh, we did it in this short film. And also the sound, the recording sound, it was very difficult to, to capture it, uh, to record it, to record it because uh, there were three people with the boomer, the boom, uh, but there were nine uh, actors, you know? So many people in one shot, uh, how do you say tonal choreograph choreography? Yeah, uh, a choreography, yes. So it was it was very difficult. So uh, after that, it, in, in post-production, we had to uh, uh, correct some uh, audios, uh, level audios from, you know, for me, what the most difficult thing. And for you, Tono? No, I mean, it was easy, but it was just to choose the, of one of the four shots that we came to an end. I mean, we started rolling the camera 14 times. We reached to an end in four of them, but they were really only two, two good shots. So it was just choosing, and when you choose, then you go to color grading, go to sound, but you can't fool around, let's say, with the editing for months. That sometimes happens when you have issues in during the shooting. So in that case, it was also, I mean, it was not easy because we had to adjust a, a little bit and the ending credits had a design and we had, something had to decide, but it was it was also the post-production was, was not that hard in terms of production. And, and Santiago was was talking there about the the choreography involved. You know, you have several actors in the scene. It's it's quite complicated in terms of the way that the camera moves. What is it focusing on in a scene? So there's there's a lot going on. Um, did you have a lot of time together with the cast ahead of filming to really choreograph with them, or or how did that look with the cinematographer? How did you you know essentially how did you choreograph and and block such a complicated film shoot for to be able to do that single shot? Uh, honestly, uh, we were very. Uh... How do you say tono cuando eres un inconsciente? Yes, uh, reckless or, or unconscious. <laughs> unconscious. Um, because we didn't know the real difficult uh, this way to shoot in uh, uh, has. So uh, when I told you we had only one day, it was only one day for everything. Okay. So in that 10 hours, nine, 10 hours, uh, we had to uh, rehearse the, uh, the short uh, in five, the first five or six hours uh, were rehearsed, 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 and the final three, four hours were shooting. No? So it was very intense, uh, but uh, it, it happened. Uh, we we had the day before we had uh, two hours uh, of reading the text, just reading on a table all the crew all the all the cast with me. But uh, that's uh, was all we did before shooting. So I think it was a, a miracle, 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 miracle. Because if we have to shoot this short in the same way, I can assure you or assure you that uh, we, I, uh, we will not get uh, in one day. It's very, very, very difficult. Very difficult because the actors uh, have not only have to say the text in the right precise moment, you know, uh, they have to remember the text, and they have to uh, to feel. Uh, real and um, uh, they are nine people uh, talking no um, the, the camera the the it was very very difficult very difficult but it happened I'm very happy and we are here in the short list of the Oscar so <laughs> we are very very happy it's so impressive that you you did it that way and and you know tono in producing a short film like this where you have one day of filming you really have one moment the day before with the cast i imagine that 
having everything in pre-production so detailed was probably incredibly important for this. And so how did the choice to film in this way with a single shot influence a lot of the work that you had to do as a producer in the short film and in making sure that all of the details were ready to go day of because you weren't going to have any time to make decisions and, and have discussions on the day? Yes, I mean, we relied a lot on the DP, on Javi Bermejo, uh, because we have worked a lot of with him before, and he had like um, an assembled crew of, uh, I mean, focus puller, but also the rigs, the electricians, they had to be coordinated. So we had like very good professionals that had to be focused during the, the 10 hours, just because we had the focus, you have the lens, and you had the lines. All of them were changing throughout the shots, plus the sound that goes, let's say, apart, we already talked about it. And I mean, it was just trusting your crew, trusting the cast because the cast for us in pre-production was very important. They, they were, they are all very solid actors. Some of, many of them have stage careers. So stage theatrical careers, that's very important because you come from a stage, you can approach um, a shooting like this in other way. I mean, it's like a challenge for them and they were like very assembled all together, helping each other. And it was a very nice experience. I can, I want also to, to highlight or the, the cast, the amazing cast. I love hearing that that so many of them come from, from stage experience. And so for you, Santiago, in working with all of the cast as a director, how did that influence the, the dynamic and the way that you would be discussing character or setting up the choreography of, of the scene and the film with them, with the fact that so many of them have this theater experience, which really helped? Uh, I think uh, we could uh, make this short film in one day uh, because of uh, the actors were really, 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 really good, you know, very, very professionals. That was the first thing Tono and I uh, had uh, very uh, clear when we decided to make this short. And uh, for that reason, at the same moment they read the script, uh, I felt that uh, they were, uh, they had not only the professional compromise with this short, uh, even the topic, the, the mental health issue for them uh, were very uh, important. To tell this is uh, to to tell this story, this story. So uh, from the beginning, we're a very good uh, uh, atmosphere uh, between they and me, and we were one team, very solid team in the same direction from from the first time uh, they read the script. It was very uh, uh, very moving for me. Uh, uh, perhaps it was the first time in my life, in my, in my short career, that uh, happened uh, this with the, all the cast and crew. Uh, we all of knew uh, 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 that we were making something special because there are many, 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 many people around the world who is uh, suffering uh, the stigma uh, of uh, mental health issues. So. I think this was a plus for the compromise of the, all the professionals. Right, and, and you, you bring up there the, the central subject of the film, which is about mental health struggles and the okay. way that people create these perceptions without knowing somebody, you know, and even as an audience, we hear about this tenant who's coming into the building, but we also never meet him. We only know, you know, what we're being told about him. Why did it feel important to have a conversation with a character that we don't meet, but who is so central to the theme and the conversation to explore that theme of the way people project onto mental health struggles? Hmm. Uh, um, the question was, uh, I, I think, eh, Mara, I, I don't know if I'm, I'm right or wrong, but uh, I, I thought that the thing is very universal. No, uh, Every one of us uh, has a neighbor. So the question that, that the short 
uh, makes uh, if you know if you knew that uh, a person with a mental health struggle is going to be your neighbor and you could avoid it from being your neighbor what would you do no uh, and i think uh, when they read the the script uh, they thought about the the neighbors you know uh, the cast uh, myself when i uh, wrote this script because this story is inspired in on a true story in spain uh, that uh, a woman uh, had been rejected from renting an apartment because of uh, she had a mental health struggle uh, so I don't know. <laughs> um, they didn't uh, need to know uh, sobre Joaquín about Joaquín. They um, didn't. Don't... They didn't need to know anything else, anything about Joaquín. No. So because I think it's very. Uh, it was very easy to uh, imagine. The, the situation. Uh, most of them had a close friends or family who also had uh, a mental health issue. Uh, maybe not too important, but they can imagine the stigma. So I don't know if I am answering your question, Mara. Sorry for you are, yeah, yeah, failing. it's great. <laughs> <laughs> you know and and tono off the back of that as well what what was so appealing to you about producing this story and and in particular the themes and the topics that it's able to explore and the dialogue that it's able to create i mean for me the most important thing is we are talking about mental health struggle which is a universal topic but we are talking about meeting your neighbor meeting the other person you can in front and in these times, I think it's very important that you know something about the struggles, about someone's uh, inner problems or conceptions, because the more you know about someone or about something, the more you can relate to him or to her, and the more you can emphasize. And that's something I think we are missing in these times. So for me, that was like the main thing. The prejudice and mental health, of course, because it's, it's like, like an epidemic, especially after the lockdown. But uh, I mean, maybe the lockdown has arise, arisen what was behind, what was uh, beyond the, the view. But I think we, we have to meet each other. We have to know more about the person you have in front of you or you live in front of. And that would solve, I think, maybe it's a, a naive idea, that will solve a lot of the problems of the world. I totally agree. And, and, you know, Santiago, you know, you have, you have the, the potential tenant that we never meet, but then at the end of the short, we learn that one of their neighbors has been struggling with mental health and, and they just didn't know it because they're not close in that way. And it's something that she hasn't shared with the group. When you were writing the film, why did it feel important to then have one of the neighbors reveal this about herself? Because it really changes the group dynamic in that moment. Wow. Is a very very good uh, question. Let's <laughs> uh, think in in in, in Spanish first. Um, Tono, can uh, can you translate it, uh, me, please? Okay. Um, okay. Um, cuando estaba escribiendo el el guión, when Santiago was writing the script, uh, no iba a meter a una persona con problemas de mental al final. In principle, he wasn't going to introduce a person with mental health issues at the end of the short. Porque no lo necesitaba. Because he didn't need it. Pero eh, sentí que eh, las personas con problemas de salud mental eh, necesitan referentes también en el cine. But he felt that people with mental health issues, they need references or reflection in the cinema. Tienen que empezar a, a contar, a, a, a normalizar su situación, a salir del armario de alguna forma. They have to, they, they need to start 
to ju just make their situation normal, to, came, to come out of the closet, let's say. Y de lo más bonito que me ha pasado con este cortometraje. And one of the nicest things that have happened to Santiago with this short film. Han sido eh, decenas de mensajes que han llegado a Instagram de personas con problemas de salud mental. Have been the, the number of, uh, of answers, the, the, I mean, a number of them, with uh, directly to his Instagram from people with mental health issues. Dando las gracias porque gracias al cortometraje han podido abrirse a sus amigos y a familiares y explicar algo que es un estigma. ¿no? Thank you, Santiago, because, because of, the, of watching the short, they have been able to face the, their neighbors or their, their, their family about something that it's an estigma. I mean, uh, they need y representation. Y, y lo hacen porque, porque Nuria el personaje final del corto lo hace de una forma valiente. Alguien da el primer paso, es decir. Yeah, and, and they do it just because Nuria, the, the character at the end of the, of the short film, just does it. They have steps, steps up and says, I'm here and I have mental health issues. Y por último, para mí era muy importante el compromiso social de hacer un cortometraje también útil. And last but not least, for him it was very important the, the social. Um, the social agenda, let's say, the social compromise of making a sort of thing that is also useful for the society we live in. I really, really love that answer. And, you know, also in, in the location of the film, because you're telling the story in this one space, it's it's interesting because it's not the space that any of the characters live in. We're not in somebody's apartment, but it's part of their building. So it gives us an idea of of their lives in this communal space. So how did how did you both set about finding the location that felt right in telling the story as the space where all these characters would come together? Wow. Well, uh, the the, the at the end uh, we shot on a studio. And it's, it's, uh, it, it, how do you say Tono tiene gracia? And it's, 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 it's funny that. <laughs> it's funny that uh, the studio is called uh, the Mad House. Uh, but we wanted, uh, we needed a very big uh, space to, to, to do the one shot uh, technique. And we, tried to uh, make a uh, art design very uh, standard in Spain, uh, not very rich, not very poor. Uh, so, so class, media, how do you say social media? Uh, middle, middle, middle class. Middle class uh, hmm. uh, looking for uh, the most of the people of most of the audience could be represented on, on the short. And this is, you must uh, know, Mara, that this is a very traditional Spanish setting. I mean, a home of um, a homeowners association board is something in the big cities and in, in the normal, in the small cities in Spain, very typical. That you meet in the flat of one of the owners, there's a president, and they all gather together, and it's something like very recognizable for, for a Spanish audience. But we give it a twist. No, it's great. And, you know, for both of you, this isn't the first short film that you have written, directed, produced. Um, and so how did having made other short films really help in, in the way that you told this story and the way that you were able to execute everything with this film? Don't know, you first. <laughs> well, I mean, yes, it's not the first short film. In fact, I mean, in 259 films in the, in the production company, We have already produced some short films and also a feature film, it's called Grampas. Uh, but it, every experience in cinema is useful. In the case of production, you start for, from scratch any project, but you have like um, the experience always is useful. Any experience that you may have in short film, advertising, feature film, even stage production is useful for the, for the upcoming project that you have to find out which is the best way to do it. Yes, this is our passion, passion, and we are very happy to uh, to be able to work every day in telling stories. So we are very, very happy.
yeah, this experience, all this experience gave us confidence, uh, but also maybe too confident. So we, we dare to do it in one day. <laughs> well, I, I love hearing all the details of, of how you made this. It's so impressive and it's such a fantastic short film. So thank you to both of you and congratulations on the Oscar shortlisting for the film. It's very well deserved. Thank you very thank much. You Mara. Thank you very much.